We have seen the application of efficient coding transform in the stereo or binocular coding. And we have seen that um, the optimal coding transform K to minimize this objective should depend on the visual input statistics, in particular probability distribution of S, the signal S, because both these terms depend on such statistics. And in particular, it depends on the signal correlation matrix RS, which in stereo coding is this matrix RS. Okay, and this will determine, for instance, the decorrelation matrix K0, and the decorrelated channels has its own signal to noise determined by this, which will then determine again control matrix G. Okay, and um, so, but if we change this uh, input statistics, we should then change the efficient coding K, and this is one of the strongest predictions from the efficient coding principle. And let's see how this applies in stereo coding in example. For instance, you know, we will change, um, for instance, the signal powers in the left and right eyes in this correlation matrix. We could also change um, uh, the correlation coefficient R in this correlation matrix. And we might even change the fact that uh, these two signal powers in the left and right eyes may be equal, the ratio may not be equal to one, it could be not one in abnormal situations. And these changes will then be manifested in the changes in the coding K, in particular what is the, the case for each neuron, the sensitivity for each neuron, the ocular dominance of a neuron, whether it's binocular or monocular. And um, and so we just note that these changes will also be manifested in ocular dominance columns seen in experimental data. And just in our notation, we uh, also point out that sometimes we'll call them GL and GR for these sensitivities. To see how the ocular dominance for each neuron adapts to input statistics, let's define for each V1 cell this uh, ocularity index and uh, through so the GL and GR its sensitivity to the left and right eye input. We see that this index is always within the range between minus one and plus one. So for instance when GL equal to GR then it's completely binocular it's equal to plus one. When GL equals to minus GR, so it's opposite in excitation or inhibition, and then you equal to minus one. Okay, and um, now let's recall that these two sensitivities actually arrive from our efficient coding from the sensitivity to the summation channel and difference channel, G plus and G minus, through the multiplexing of U. And then you can write GL and GR depends on G plus and G minus this way. And this parameter phi depends on exactly what your matrix is and exactly whether you're looking at the first or second neuron in this encoding transform. In any case, you can see that GL and GR are in common in the first term through this G plus and opposing each other by the second term through this G minus. So without G minus, GL would be exactly equal to G, uh, GR, yeah? And the other way around, if you don't have the G plus, then the GL will be exactly opposing and GL, uh, G, uh, GR. And so therefore you plug that in, indeed that's the case, yeah? Without G minus, this is equal to plus one, this, then without G plus, it will be equal to minus one. And so therefore, regardless of what that phi is, you can come to this general conclusion that uh, um, a cell is more likely to be binocular if the summation gain dominates and more likely to be monocular otherwise. So through so this general rule, we can now are ready to examine uh, how ocularity of V1 neurons adapts to input statistics. For example, if the visual environment changes, sometimes it's brighter, sometimes dimmer. Uh, this gives higher or lower signal to noise uh, in our signals and therefore higher or lower signal powers 
in our college matrix and therefore also higher or lower signal powers in our binocular summation and binocular difference channels that will determine the gain g plus and g minus yeah and that means in the brighter environment you are more likely to have um, g plus less than g minus so therefore to enhance contrast with a stronger gain to the binocular difference and this means according to our rule here general rule here that we will have fewer binocular cells in brighter environment and in other words in the primary visual cortex v1 the fraction of neurons that are binocular uh, should increase as the environment becomes dimmer different animal species can also have different input statistics for example some animals have short and other animals have long distances um, between their two eyes uh, for example the squirrel monkeys have their two eyes very close together they have a very small body size and uh, hammerhead sharks on the other hand have their two eyes very far apart from each other and so in squirrel monkey this means that uh, the correlation between their left and right eye inputs should be higher uh, in this correlation coefficient r than that in a shark yeah and of course you can also artificially make this correlation coefficient r higher for instance in experimental conditions you can artificially stimulate the two retinas of young animals during development and uh, by the same signal simultaneously given to the two uh, retinas now in such a case with larger correlation coefficient then you should have a weaker uh, binocular difference signal in such animals and such weaker signal will be more likely to be overwhelmed by noise and therefore more likely to be uh, downplayed or abandoned by a smaller gain g minus to this channel and so again by this general rule uh, they should have more binocular cells in squirrel monkeys than in uh, hammerhead sharks or you know squirrel monkeys should also have more binocular cells probably uh, than humans or bigger monkeys and so therefore in such animals they should also have a weaker ocular dominance columns compared to the hammerhead sharks people with strabismus or cross eyes also have lower binocular correlation so they should also have fewer binocular cells than the normals we can also compare v1 neurons whose residual fields are horizontally oriented with other v1 residual fields that are vertically oriented and because our two eyes are horizontally displaced and therefore horizontally tuned cells uh, they have higher correlation R yeah, than the vertically tuned cells. You are more likely to have contents in the two vertically tuned uh, vertical residual fields different from each other than you have the horizontally residual fields. And therefore, we can predict that these horizontally tuned cells are more likely binocular. And uh, um, this is consistent uh, with data. Here is another example. If we look at V1 neurons, some have larger residual fields and others have smaller residual fields. And um, so this larger residual fields versus smaller residual fields have two effects. Firstly, the ones with larger residual fields, they will have larger signal power. Okay, so this affects the, uh, this factor in the correlation matrix. Secondly, they also have larger binocular correlation coefficient R. And this is simply because the correlations between two eyes are stronger when it is on a coarser scale than it is on a finer scale. Yeah. And so um, you can uh, look at this uh, in another way. So this is the spatial frequency, preferred spatial frequency of the neurons. 
and this is the signal power as you go higher frequency the rest of the field gets smaller and so the signals drop down okay signal power drop down and same thing as the spatial frequency becomes uh, larger the correlation coefficient also drops down yeah and so these two effects, one is on a correlation, one is on the signal power, we know that they can combine and, and do something. So as the resistive field size decreases, as preferred spatial frequency increases, two things happen. One is the signal to noise decreases. And by now we know this means that the, the ratio between the uh, G plus over G minus will increase. That leads to more binocular cells. On the other hand, when the ocular correlation R decreases, yeah, and when R really become very small, there's no correlation left between the two eyes, and you just there's no need to decorrelate. So there's no need to mix the signals between two eyes for decorrelation. Then the cells will become monocular. So putting these things together, the net effect is as the rest of you. First, um, as the decreases, you know, first spatial frequency increases, the first resistive field becomes more binocular. Okay, this is plotted here. Spatial frequency increases, okay, and the, 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 it becomes more and more binocular, okay. And then later on, in the end, as the spatial frequency gets really big, when the resistive fields really become quite tiny, then cells become monocular again. Um, this, of course, means um, that. Uh, only if the cells really become very tiny. Uh, for some animals, this may never achieve if they don't have uh, good spatial acuity. But for monkeys and, and humans, maybe uh, this this could uh, could be there. And this is worth looking at um, in the data. Visual input statistics uh, takes another form during monocular deprivation. Uh, when the inputs are weaker or absent to one of the eyes, then the signal power in the two eyes are different from each other. And this is manifested in a correlation uh, matrix in which the two diagonal terms are no longer equal to each other. And so that this matrix eigenvectors should also change and no longer the normal summation difference channel, but the summation signal takes more contribution and more sensitive to the normal eye, while the different signal is more sensitive to the deprived eye. Uh, in addition, because the deprived eyes are so weak, uh, and this channel, difference channel, it would also have a much weaker signal than um, the, the normal form. And this weaker signal is then often um, overpowered by noise, so often should be abandoned by the efficient coding. So as a result, most of V1 cells will be dominated by the normal eye, and uh, this normal eye should have then a thicker ocular dominance column, and, a, and the deprived eye have a thinner ocular dominance column.